we have all lost loved ones to cancers. We've seen families suffer. And we know that this is a problem that needs to be solved. My father passed away from from prostate cancer. My mother right now is uh, living with metastatic lung cancer. I have lost my, my father to cancer. I lost my grandfather from brain cancer. And my aunt uh, died from lymphoma. Many years back when I started in oncology, a, a close family member was diagnosed with breast cancer. It was just uh, appalling to me that even at the time I thought we were so advanced and just watching her go through chemotherapy which just is so harsh and has so many different side effects. It was a very personal experience. It kind of made you realize the importance of, of science and of understanding how these tumors are growing and evolving and the importance of early detection. Within oncology, we're divided into hematologic malignancies, those that arise from the blood, um, and solid tumors, so, such as lung cancer or breast cancer. Blood cancers are almost what you think of in terms of it's a, a disease, a cancer disease, but that affects the blood cells. Most typically, these are the immune cells in the blood, such as the white blood cells, um, or you know, other types of, of cells could also be involved. But we're really focused on blood cancers that involve the white blood cells, and those are typically leukemia and lymphoma. Our researchers have prioritized three main areas of focus. So the first is looking at regulated cell death, trying to exploit the pathways a cell uses to induce its own demise in an orderly, programmed manner. The second is looking at immuno-oncology, certainly an area of intense research uh, in this field, where we explore ways to unleash the body's own immune system to eradicate cancerous cells. And the third approach is targeting tumor-specific antigens through approaches such as antibody drug conjugates. That's where you take an antibody and link it to a toxin the antibody binds directly to a protein expressed on the tumor cell, gets internalized into the cell, like a Trojan horse almost, and then the toxin gets released directly into that tumor cell. So it's very targeted delivery of therapies to a cell, and those generally induce less collateral damage than standard chemotherapy. BCL2 is a protein that actually regulates this apoptosis or programmed cell death pathway. But it was in the mid-1980s that researchers from Australia and researchers from the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute at Harvard discovered that unlike any other oncogene that had been discovered, what BCL2 did was it blocked the ability of cells to undergo apoptosis. That led to an accumulation of cells and helped drive the cancer. This discovery opened up an entire new area of research that hadn't existed before. And this is the research that we became involved in. BTK is a specific enzyme that's expressed in immune cells. Um, and specifically, we see this enzyme expressed in cancer cells. These cells actually depend on, on BTK for their survival and growth. So by targeting you know, BTK, a specific enzyme that these cancer cells are reliant on, we're able to preferentially kill cancer cells and, and spare normal human cells and normal tissues. A moment when I felt particularly proud of what we do. It was very early on in the development of AbbVie's BCL2 inhibitor. This is when it was still in phase one studies and we were starting to see the early clinical data coming in. I still remember exactly where I was standing and looking over the shoulder of the scientist who had done that biomarker research. And we were seeing that these patients were responding to this BCL2 inhibitor. And these are patients who historically have done poorly on chemotherapy. And so it really just gave me a sense of the difference that these drugs were going to make in the lives of uh, patients with cancer. Our hope is that 
Cancer in the future is not something that limits the lifespan of many patients, but is something that you know can be managed and potentially cured. The idea that years ago we were minimally just trying to extend life with targeted therapies, we're not only just extending life, but we're actually boosting quality of life among those cancer patients. And some of the things that we've done within AbbVie or oncology at AbbVie uh, have really benefited uh, uh, patients in a way that is uh, really transformative. We're basically curious and we're basically problem solvers. And so day to day we're in there trying to solve that next problem. I, I can't think of a person who's not affected by cancer in some way. You know, whether within our own families, community, or patients we've treated. So it comes home. One of the cases I will never forget as I was treating multiple myeloma patients. I remember a patient was ready to retire, and that patient was uh, visiting her local doctor doing some labs and, and came up with uh, a possible suspicious diagnosis of multiple myeloma. And that patient eventually went into a clinical trial and uh, during her start of therapy was discovered to have one of the worst types of that disease, such genetically high risk patient. That was supposed to live according to science and uh, without any innovation or medicine, six to eight months max. That patient story I carry with me almost eight years now and that patient is still alive and was still in connection and she have been in multiple clinical trials and still surviving and fighting. It's a very good example to share that new innovative target therapy does impact patients and some of those patients live from medicine to medicine. So innovation needs to happen, minimizing the amount of patient that loses the battle to cancer is our objective.